there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and uh, here I'm sitting next to a birch tree that has fallen down in my woods near my home. And I'm going to show you how we can use some of the bark to make some frames. Here's just a little frame I made earlier to go with the um, watercolor crayon painting I showed you in my last video. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can um, use some of this bark in your creation. Okay, I couldn't catch it on tape, but I did manage to peel some birch bark off of the fallen birch tree that was in my woods. Do not peel it off a standing live tree, please. Collect it from the ground or peel it off a tree that's fallen. Um, and this is the finished frame I'm just showing you to begin with. And um, it's very easy to do a frame like this. You can start off like I did there with the piece of mat board that I had already um, done a little painting on, but you can also make this frame on a um, just a piece of mat board like I have here. This is just like a um, four and three quarter inch square. Or if you're an oil painter or an acrylic painter and you want to have something that's um, a little bit sturdier, you can use masonite right from the hardware store. Uh, quarter inch or eighth inch masonite would be good for that. If you're keeping it small like this, it does not need to be anything too thick. All right, so uh, the first thing you want to do is kind of tear it into strips. And um, you can cut it or you can tear it. I kind of like the organic edge that I get when I tear it. So I'm just going to tear some strips off here. Now the scraps, you'll have like little odds and ends left over. Um, oh, I didn't wash my mat after I did that painting video a few minutes ago. Um, the scraps you have left over are really great for if you go camping or if you have a wood stove, they're excellent tinder. So um, so don't throw them away, save them. If you have some, know somebody that has a fireplace or wood stove, um, you can um, pass them along. They're just excellent for um, making fires, fire starting and campfires and what have you. So let's see, one, two, three, four. I have four pretty decent strips here, and I'll set those away. Of course, you can also use like the scraps to embellish a card. Um, the only thing I want to really stress is not to pull this off of a fresh, healthy tree. You want to, you know, take it from a dead tree or, you know, just find fallen birch bark on the ground. All right, so the first step is very easy. You just want to simply measure the first two sides and trim your bark with a pair of scissors or um, an X-Acto knife. I'm using my rubber cutting scissors, my KAI scissors, and I'll just need to wash them with some Goo Gone when I'm done because the pitch that's on the um, birch bark that makes it start really good um, will also leave a sticky goo on my scissors. Um, birch bark, ironically, is... Um, I think one of the only things that will light if it's wet. So if you're out camping and you can't get a fire started because it's really damp, then um, you can use birch bark to start your fire. It's just pretty awesome. All right, let me cut that side here. So the two opposite sides, I'm just cutting flush. And I'm hot gluing it in place. Now if I want this edge to be a little bit more um, organic, I can just tear a little bit more off. You want to do that before you glue it down because you might not be able to do that afterwards. I just want to have it a little bit rougher of an edge so it looked a little more natural. There we go. Boy, this does make quite a mess on the craft table. I have to say I've got little bits of, of uh, birch debris everywhere. Birch? Birch? Birch. Birch bark. Birch. It's a cross between birch and bark. Can't be taking time to say both of those words. All right, let me peel a little bit more off here. Okay, so when I get to an edge, now you could have it lay flat across like that. There's nothing wrong with that, but I want a mitered look to my frame. So what I'm going to do is kind of eyeball, nothing too exact. I'm just gonna maybe make a little notch there where I want to miter it to, and I'm just gonna cut it straight across so that when I glue it down, I get kind of like a mitered look. I need to go in a little bit deeper on that. There, that looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing here. And then I'll glue that piece down. Now this isn't going to leave me too much room in the middle for my artwork, so it'll have to be a very small painting, or maybe like a pressed leaf or a pressed flower would be really pretty in the center. Or even a photograph. Wouldn't it be cute to, to put a little photo in there of somebody or something or, you know, a little, 
that color would be pretty like a photograph of a dog or something like that. Tray lovely. Alright, let's just trim this off here again. These scissors are great. Um, they're super sharp. They can handle these thick um, materials. I usually cut it a little bit shorter than what I think I need and then I'll kind of go back in again and get the get it a little bit closer so I don't want to waste it because sometimes it's hard to get a decent piece of bark. Pull that off. And as far as hanging, you could um, glue a little hook to the back. This is very lightweight, obviously. Um, or you could punch a couple holes and string on some jute or some rusty wire. You know, this is very a very prim looking craft. It's going to look very natural, perfect for a camp or, um, you know, or even like a holiday display. It would be pretty for Thanksgiving. You know, you could put like um, a number in the middle. If you had like a couple tables at your house where you're doing Thanksgiving, you want to number each table or, you know, just put, you know, a little, put a couple acorns in there. I went and I picked a couple acorns off the, off the ground thinking, oh, maybe I want to embellish it a bit. I got some acorn caps. I don't know, I got some pine cones. I couldn't find any of the nice little ones that I saw the other day. Um, but you know, nature has its very own embellishments that you can play with. So, you know, go forage around in your yard when you're feeling like you need to have some new crafty stuff to work with. That's actually kind of kind of cool looking. Well, here we go. We'll look again at the original one that I did. I might have to glue those acorn caps on there. I'm kind of liking that. Such a cheapskate. <laughs> There you go. We have some birch bark frames. So easy to do. Just don't peel the bark off the trees that are alive. Make sure you get it from dead trees on the ground or just pick it up off the ground. And remember to save your scraps for your fireplace, your wood fire. It's so nice to use stuff from nature. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!